I've uh, worked super glue into the roll and pitch axis and it's now very very stiff stiff as a bishop's mitre and uh, we're ready now to attach that um, to the yaw or pan axis now this is the yaw axis the roll motor attaches there and the pan or yaw motor attaches there I've assembled it already um, it's quite straightforward it's a bit chunky but that's because this part of the gimbal takes the most stress also I've used polycarbonate here instead of PLA um, because of that but I'm sure PLA will be fine um, that explains the difference in colour so we attach the roll motor there and you'll notice that we've got set screws here so we can adjust the height of the gimbal and the pan motor attaches there and that is adjustable oops, daisy adjustable forwards and backwards to get the um, your axis balance absolutely correct and we put set screws in here um, so that we can tighten that up when we've finished finished adjusting. Um, and this is the rail mount for the whole gimbal, which I'll talk about when I've put this lot together. One thing I should say, um, we're using thicker carbon tube here. This is 10 centimeters, I think. No, 12 centimeters. Um, 12 millimeters uh, and that's because we want this to be stiffer when I originally designed it I had just one um, one tube but that made the whole thing twisty so I put two tubes and that's as rigid as you like I want to tell you as well that you should take care when cutting carbon fiber because according to the box that my tubes came in if you live in the state of California carbon fiber dust can cause cancer and birth defects which um, explains a lot I suppose but I, uh, take extra care if you live in the state of California or anywhere else for that matter wear a mask when you're cutting it um, polycarbonate comes with a health warning as well something to do with the vapor Right, I'll just put all this lot together and we'll then talk about assembling the whole gimbal together. Well, pan axis is now done. Um, again, we've carefully threaded all the wires through the center of the motor. And this is the last motor, the yaw motor or pan motor. And the whole gimbal hangs from that motor. Um, only one thing I need to point out, of course this is adjustable because we need to balance the u-axis very finely. Um, there's four 2.5 mil screws here. The one where the cable goes in, if you're going to uh, route the cable underneath the uh, motor bracket that screw there just point it out see if we get in the light that screw there needs to be just that little bit longer than the others about eight millimeters instead of five millimeters um, but don't whatever you do um, try any longer screws than the ones I recommend uh, because you can damage the motor uh, by screwing the screw into the winding. I don't know why these people don't supply screws with the brushless motors, T-motor, it's an expensive motor. As all other motor suppliers um, supply the mounting screws. But not these guys. 
uh, hopefully you'll get a motor that does supply the correct screws. Now the last thing before the actual moving part of the gimbal is complete is to mount the rail mount. Now this is the copter mount. We're also going to use it for the handheld mount. This screws straight onto the motor there and you'll notice I've used these vibration isolators. They're quite heavy ones, 17 mil, because we're using compression on the motor. We're not hanging the gimbal from the vibration isolators. The gimbal is actually compressing the isolators. See, I can squeeze that together. So there's one, two, three, four bits here, the two rail mounts and the two parts of the motor mount. Um, and the reason it's a compression mount rather than uh, what the other people use a hanging mount is because it's safer. You don't want the uh, gimbal dropping out of the aeroplane and falling out of the sky. So I'll just mount that now and um, show you what comes next. Sorry, while I was doing that, I forgot to print the, the BGC, the brushless gimbal controller mounting onto here. So that goes in between the your motor mount and the vibration damping. And that um, the rail mounts screw in over the top of that, like that. So sorry, I forgot to do that. I'll um, put that all together now and then we'll move on. I've attached the yaw mount uh, now to the third and last brushless gimbal motor. All the axes turn through 360 degrees now and all it's, and this is in fact all the mechanical assembly that you need to do if you're going to use this gimbal on a drone or copter. Um, if you snap these rail mounts onto the rails of your copter, it's a standard size, um, then you're ready to balance your gimbal. Um, but you need to, of course, to do the electronics now. Um, there's two options as far as a, a gimbal controller is concerned. In the past I've always used one of these uh, which is a, a Storm 32 gimbal. I find them quite easy to tune and they're reliable and that will bolt on to there. Um, however, I'm told that this Alexmos thing is the industry standard so I'm going to give that a try as well. So they're interchangeable. You can bolt the Lexmos on on there if you so wish. Um, I'm going to try the Lexmos, and I compare it with the Storm 32 after I've used it for a while with both of them. I'll put a comparison up for this gimbal. Um, and of course all the leads, the IMU lead, the lead for the motors, and the camera control leads need to be terminated and plugged into the flight controller and to the radio on your copter. Um, so what I'm going to do now is terminate these leads for the flight controller and show you what you need to do if you wish to use this gimbal handheld. There's quite a few extra parts. Uh, to be added if you um, want to use the gimbal as a handheld. Um, because it's got these clips, you can um, use it either on an aircraft or as handheld and just unclip it from the one and clip it onto the other. It folds quite nicely as well, so you can easily put it in, into a backpack. I'll do that now. Put that sideways that sideways, that sideways, and that will go 
Let's adjust that. That will go into your backpack quite nicely. It's quite small, that's my hand. Um, right, so now I'm going to terminate the leads, mount the flight controller, and start work on the handheld part of the gimbal. Obviously on the handheld gimbal you're going to need a screen if you're using the Blackmagic because the Blackmagic camera doesn't have its own screen. If you're using a GH3, a Panasonic or other MFT camera like that then you can probably dispense with the, the screen.